Hello and welcome to our session on Remote Work 2.0. Can you survive this new world and all the new intelligence that is required for both the organization and the individual? I have with me uh, Diane Dai Hansen from What Works Consultants along with me here today. And we'd like to take you through key areas in which or key standards that are now required for remote work. Some of it you may be aware of, some of it you may not be. So what we will essentially cover in this quick session is key standards, some stats that surround some of these standards, the data that's available, what remotability as a tool in itself allows you to do and to use uh, to improve your remote work capability. Uh, increase revenues, reduce costs, etc. And the five key questions that you need to answer uh, in terms of this new remote work world today. So without much more ado, um, I'm going to hand you over to Dai, uh, who will tell us a little bit about what she does and how she works in with remotability. Dai. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Diane Dye Hansen. I am the Chief Management Consultant of What Works Consultants, and we focus on change management through the lens of process improvement, internal communication, and talent optimization. We truly believe that business problems should never be faced alone. That's why, as the sea level's best friend, we help you scale mountains by providing research, developing your company's processes, crafting your internal communication, focusing your change management initiatives and optimizing your teams. The way we work with remotability is that we help you interpret the data that remotability provides. Remotability is an assessment software and data is only as good as the interpretation and the actionability of that data. So we utilize that to change remote work processes, communicate standards to your employees, and optimize your re remote work teams to guide change within your organization. Thank you, Dai. That was very incisive. Um, and Dai has had has many years of expertise in this space anyway. Uh, so welcome aboard, uh, Dai. Uh, a quick note about remotability and snapshots and us ourselves. So remotability was formed out of a tool called uh, Snapshots, which is a contact center audit and benchmarking tool that's been around for over a decade uh, and has got about 3000 plus customers globally. Uh, in 2020, uh, we were one of the first organizations that our customers came to in terms of being able to understand how well they can remote work set up and importantly going forward uh, what are the key challenges for remote work because we've been doing this for the last 10 years and so what we did was we actually pulled together all the global standards that were related to remote work added the data and the insights from our tool to create this tool called uh, remotability now, the tool the remotability in itself contains a lot of directives from various governments, including the US, UK uh, and other parts of the world, uh, because today remote work is global. It's not just uh, confined to any particular area and the ability to draw upon these global standards are pretty important. So let me first start by actually telling you a little bit about some of the, the basis on which we've drawn some of the insights for the steps that you're going to see shortly. Uh, it's drawn from about 40,000 users across 30 odd countries um, in terms of remotability. And what we've been able to extract from this data are four categories of individual challenges that remote workers face today. Uh, they're related to work, they're related to the home office, they're related to the person and the characteristics of the person themselves. And this, as you can see, presents a range of complex challenges for the individual. Yes, and I want to challenge those who are watching uh, this event to really think about each of these individual instances and how many times you or your teams have come into these situations. 
Um, sometimes when we're looking at remote work, we tend to look at it only from the home office standpoint. You know, do you have internet access? Is that internet access working? And do you have a green screen? And that's just about it. But as you can see, that's only about 20% of the entire picture of productivity. So you have the work-related issues such as working and managing multiple time zones, unclear performance metrics, bad bosses. Um, you have the home office that we're used to of technology hiccups, but we also have personalities, uh, mental health, uh, motivation, um, distraction, how, how distractible is that employee, and personal characteristics like working in pajamas or the blurred line between personal and professional life, which just seems to be growing. And as we look into each of these areas, we actually increase productivity and save the company money along the way. Indeed, Di. And it's not just the individual challenges that um, remote work presents. Uh, organizations, too, have significant challenges, and they can be categorized into areas of risk, technology, policies and procedures, and corporate social responsibility and corporate responsibility in itself. As you can see, uh, even in the context of the organization, we've got four key areas of focus uh, that we, we need to concentrate on. The issue of managing 100 places, uh, workplaces instead of one, uh, and a range of other issues die, which I'm sure you are very mm -hmm. familiar with too. Absolutely. The security risk is huge of having remote workers. Um, if your organization cannot afford to supply your remote workers with computers, uh, dongles, um, the ability to protect their network via a firewall, you're basically exposing yourself to data and security privacy risks. Um, also, when you look at various uh, corporate responsibility issues, this is huge. Team mental health, team physical health, all of these things are being proven now to be deteriorating with remote work as individuals have less access to other human beings to communicate with throughout the day, depression, anxiety, all of these mental health issues are starting to come to the surface. And this not only affects the productivity within the organization, um, it, it really impacts the quality of what the organization is putting out there. So what's needed in this situation is very clear metrics to determine the health of the employee and their readiness for remote work, but also specific playbooks to mitigate that risk and also mature that employee from a low, um, low level um, productivity employee to an optimum level productivity employee when they're working from home. Indeed. Um, and to that point too, uh die one of the key challenges for organizations is uh, having that of uh, managing that thin line between productivity and privacy uh, just mm -hmm. recently there was uh, another organization that's been taken up by their own employees saying look we cannot be uh, we, you are invading our privacy and we need to be careful of how we manage those conversations how we manage the challenges importantly how we manage the legal aspects of it uh, and uh, what we really need to also look at is the fact that not just the way we manage and communicate to these people, but the challenges when it comes to uh, restructuring the way we approach our pay, our motivation along with that. This is a LinkedIn poll that we just recently conducted. And uh, these, are, these are key issues for the organization. Uh, the other piece, which Dai is also very, very good at uh, managing and supporting organizations is uh, having employee engagement in this new remote work setup is one of the key issues for organizations and uh, not getting it right, not having the right community. The challenge for organizations is to build a community, a digital community that they didn't do before. Uh, you didn't, you don't have the uh, coffee, uh, coffee cup, uh, coffee machine no. invitations anymore, but now Creating this digital environment and community is the greatest challenge. 
Yes, absolutely. I, I think you just hit on the uh, trifecta there, Deepak. It is the privacy combined with the compensation combined with the employee engagement. And if one of those falls down, all three of them do. And especially from a um, engagement standpoint, um, it's just, it's becoming harder and harder anyway, re regardless of remote work to engage employees. So when you are, when you're looking at an employee engagement program, you cannot afford to leave out remote work. Um, when you do, you lose a huge piece of the puzzle, regardless of whether you're 100% re remote work or you're a hybrid model or you just have occasional remote workers. Indeed, indeed. And um, one size does not fit all when it comes to managing this in terms of structure as well. So given the complexity of these different challenges, uh, we now, in the context of what we are facing, is a new world. Uh, and the world that we knew it pre-2020 is different to what, what we are seeing into 2021 and beyond. And what that means is that there is now a need for the organization uh, to have responsibility for that home office. And there is a duty of care, and it's also being legislated upon quite clearly uh, across many jurisdictions globally so that's one key piece we need to bear in mind it can be opportunities for revenue it can be opportunities for cost but it can be opportunities for absolutely uh, a workforce that's not necessarily connected which is lost now also unknown and less understood is the fact that the individual too has a responsibility for their own self and workspace something that we were not necessarily uh, fully appreciative of before and less appreciative of now uh, given what we known in terms of the individual ch challenges as for the individual as well as the organization there's also based on what we've seen a new remote work standard driven by the World Health Organization. Uh, and what that is, is what they're really saying here uh, is they want us to understand that remote work requires well being to continue not just at the workplace, not just at uh, the home workplace, but into retirement as well. And what that means is a new approach for managing, uh, which is what the world's beginning to understand and appreciate based on some of these standards driven by the WHO, uh, the International Labour Organization and organizations uh, and governments globally. A lot of focus being on mental health, on privacy and data management, as we all know, key focuses. Mm -hmm. uh, from an individual perspective too, uh, if you look at the standards, they cover five key areas. That's the workspace, the environmental conditions, the tech that we use, and the privacy and ethics alongside it. Uh, insurance, accounting, and taxation has changed for individuals supporting organizations who are contractors, etc. And importantly, personal productivity, mental health, and well being, where we now need to have the disciplines knowing from the time we get up to the time we get to bed what we're going to be doing, uh, because that's a structure that we need very much. Uh, to be productive. We need to be staying connected, not just within the organization, but within the greater uh, greater uh, social structures that we work in, uh, which is sometimes a challenge for individuals as well. Uh, and importantly, we now have greater responsibility for our own physical and mental well-being uh, and whatever those steps that are necessary, because we need to be able to be productive in whatever work environment, whether it be in an office or a home office. Yeah, Absolutely. Cool. And I also want to encourage those who are watching today to not consider remote work to be a cost center. In fact, it can be a cost savings center. Uh, we're seeing it across the board. We're seeing that a commercial uh, real estate space is shrinking down, thus saving money. If you can hone in on your remote work metrics, you can really connect with what is a 
available um, from a, uh, a standpoint of equipment that your workers already own that does not have to be company owned, which is another cost savings. Another way you can save money with remote work is to be in compliance. So when you are in compliance, you're going to save money on insurance. You're going to tighten up those accounting processes and um, there are tax benefits that some um, municipalities and governments are giving um, for remote work and hybrid situations um, in this pandemic period that we are in. So start really challenging yourself to change the way you think about remote work and think about the ways that you can measure remote work effectiveness and allow it to save you money. Absolutely. Um, many facets to remote work, uh, including the fact that there are now standards for organizations as well. We refer, we did talk about the technology, the the line between productivity and personal uh, intrusion of personal spaces. Uh, we there are now new tools that are coming out or that are available. That uh, that's actually eighteen months ago to where we are today different uh, tools available, workforce management, workforce optimization tools, uh, all growing at a rapid pace. We also have a challenge around the new policies and procedures. Whilst we've dusted out some of the old policies uh, and moved them up a bit, we now need to actually align to what the global standards are, especially when you have a distributed workforce. Uh, you have challenges around mental health, uh, when men, mental health, people working alone, and a whole range of stuff. What our stats are telling us that is that only 35% of organizations, uh, in spite of having dusted out their old policies and procedures, are actually able to meet change conditions. And this is both a risk and an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, what that really means is that we now need to have a greater understanding of our remote work capability for each member of our teams based on the new standards that are out there, which basically provide a platform for them to be able to work productively, uh, safely and healthily. So we don't really know within our team, we cannot really tell whether uh, Joe here is working well as a mature remote worker. Uh, we don't know whether um, uh, Jane here needs some support. Uh, and we don't know whether Jill uh, is, is at risk, is a uh, risk uh, working from home. She might be in an uh, abusive situation or it might be she might have lots of kids around her. Um, there might be different situations, but they're all expected to perform because they're part of the same team. They all have the same productivity standards yes out of different environments yes one of the biggest mistakes that managers make is treating all employees the same and when you have a health score for remote work you can create a very specific game plan um, when it comes to how they are treated. So you can take your at-risk remote worker and you can develop a very specific improvement plan and playbooks for those at-risk workers. Whereas the mature workers, you're not going to utilize your time, energy, and dollars on working with them because they're set. However, when you treat employees all the same way and execute blanket playbooks, blanket policies without the data, you waste time, you waste money, and you waste the energy and you frustrate your employees. So having this data is not optional, it's essential. Indeed, Dai. So imagine if you've got a you know workforce of, uh, whether it be 10 or 20 or 2,000 or 20,000 people, uh, imagine the the spread of capability across the teams. Uh, imagine the needs, the specific needs across the different teams. Imagine how much of money is uh, being spent by using carte blanche programs uh, and the reductions of and the opportunity to reduce costs. More importantly, the opportunity to by understanding the needs to be able to 
cater to the need uh, to the needs of the organization by understanding the needs of these people what we're able to do is to actually uh, utilize our resources much more efficiently which helps productivity as well cost reduces helps productivity so what that really means um, is that organizations today whoever you are in the context of managing people uh, we want to make sure that we answer these five key questions is one of the f top issues that can help uh, pro uh, remote workers where can they be, be more productive who are the workers who are at risk who are the ones who are working well because if we know they're working well uh, not only do we spend less time but we are also able to use them to peer manage those that are not because this is a great opportunity uh, across the organization where we do encourage cross-organizational conversations by having that kind of uh, approach we will then we need to know what the top 20 issues are uh, and importantly we need to know the issues that are going to reduce risk harm and injury to the organization so put differently it sounds like this what we now are able to do to help organizations answer these five questions uh, is a tool called remote ability uh, which as I said earlier we launched in October last year what I'm going to be able to do now is to actually demonstrate for you how we can understand the needs of the organization uh, and the individual based on the data that we can extract across the uh, along with this tool so very quickly if you're an organization with say a hundred employees you will have a hundred licenses for the agent or for the for your team members to respond to and one license for the organization to respond to so to be able to understand the remote work capabilities of both the organization and the individual as well as their needs and their current standing so how it will work is that what we got there is that we've got i might need to go back in here again um, so what we've got here is we've got from an organizational perspective a range of checklists uh, starting with all aligned to the standards uh, in terms of processes in terms of policies codes of conduct confidentiality all new areas that organizations need to contend with and as i said earlier only 35 percent of the organizations globally uh, have been able to align themselves to these new standards which is presenting risk as well as opportunity um, secondly, in terms of the way an individual might approach this assessment is the five key areas, workspace, environmental conditions, tech, insurance, accounting and tax and personal productivity. Five key areas determined by the global standards and how they'll do it is they'll, it's a checklist basically uh, where for, for instance in the workspace you look at the physical environments that they work from uh, all the equipment that they use, the tech that they use, the current, the, the way they need to manage their uh, posture and ergonomics. And importantly, what they're also able to do is to provide the organization with an idea of the workspace. So they can actually upload their photos, uh, documents, all related to remote work and keep it in one place. So what we're really doing is uh, we are in jurisdictions where it's now compulsory to ensure that uh, individual workspaces provide the organization with flow plans, uh, etc. Uh, we can now put all of it in one place. In fact, an organization by just you coordinating the uh, and collating workspaces has saved more than $1.3 million in terms of just administration and management time of just yep. pulling it Absolutely. Together. And when you click into workstation setup and, and look at that workstation setup, that alone can save you so much money. So for example, if you have, uh, you may not see any problems right now with your remote workforce. However, what you will experience down the road, say a year or two years down the road, is after a while of working inappropriately, um, you're gonna have employees that are going to have carpal tunnel. They're going to have back problems. They're gonna have neck problems. They're gonna have shoulder 
problems. And all of this will then connect back to workman's comp. So it's a huge risk management play to be sure that your remote workers are self-reporting that they are doing things correctly to protect your company. Indeed, Dai. So a quick demo again in terms of how the tool works, but importantly, it's a process of not just sending people checklists because people are checklisted out. This is a process by which you want to engage your team in there for their own benefit, because also because you care, uh, and so that they also become A, aware, because it is a duty of care uh, and a responsibility for corporates to actually get people to understand, for instance, that all power outlets need to be in good condition, uh, or they need to make sure that there's a surge protector uh, available so that they don't put multiple plugs on to one point or take out many devices from one plug point. Importantly, if they if they do find that that is an issue, they can actually create a bit of a task for themselves or send it out to the organization, give themselves an email rem reminder or to whoever or their manager if the need arises or or, or if it's stipulated to be so. So that what we're doing is not only are we engaging that team member to actually take action uh, and which we can review uh, six months down the line. So the standard for review is around six months, every six months, because our conditions and uh, everything changes. So what we are able to do is to be able to, sh to engage the team member uh, and importantly understand across the teams if, for instance, we might need uh, power boards or whether we can do bulk purchasing uh, for uh, power surge protector power boards, because it might be an issue. It may not be an issue, but the important piece is if we don't have this and we have two or three computers uh, being cut out because of productivity, uh, because um, uh, there's been a power surge, we lose not only the, not only the computer, but the person's productive time as well. Uh, and we can't afford that. And this, apart from that, impo impacts on our insurance as well. So overall, we want to make sure that the team members engage. We know what's happening. We understand the pro we understand the needs, so that we can then begin to uh, drive specific programs across the business. So once these, once this, they work through the tool, which shouldn't be more than an hour, and they can actually do this over a period of eight weeks as well, if, if the need arises, but we usually tell, we advise customers that they need to, team members need to complete within the hour. Uh, it's the process for signing licenses are very easy. Uh, you can either do it yourself from one administrative perspective within the organization, or we can bulk uh, upload for you as well, assign and uh, upload for you as well. So there are so there are two or three different approaches of assigning these licenses. Uh, and importantly, what we are able to do is to provide you with the communications that are required to support any program like this uh, going out to your teams. Now, once they've actually finished this, what they're able to do very quickly is to see how well they've fared as an individual. Um, whether they are remote work capable and importantly once they've once they've actually done that they've got the ability to look at some of the tasks that they've created uh, for themselves uh, and then what they've also been able what they're also able to do uh, is to be able to understand how they've fared as an individual across these different sections what this there are a couple of other reports too and yeah. in depth Around. This is a really great management tool. So this is a great tool for one-to-ones, um, for managers and employees to guide the remote work setup process um, rather than, um, you know, putting it all on the employee to set up their workspace, which is what is in existence now, this gives management a comprehensive report in which they can look at and then coach to remote work readiness or improve readiness based on um, that maturity score. Indeed. And and uh, die to that point, what to make it easy for both the individual and the managers, uh, we, the report basically gives you 
you know the key a focus sections and importantly it goes through the whole detail so for instance you know if you if you say this is not a shared workspace which is good but if you look at the uh, response uh, in 1.3.1 it says is there a desk or a table to work on which means that they are working and they said no they're working off the kitchen table now that's fine but there are you can now address this by sending them providing them with information on how best to structure posture when you're working off a kitchen table or, or your sofa and that's absolutely that's pretty important now in more most more importantly so is the ability for an organization to actually understand uh, how they themselves um, will sit as far as the organization there we are let me just move to a good environment well we can actually the organization themselves can see how they are faring um, they, they get the same certificate if they are aligned to the global standards as the individual does. But importantly, um, what they're also able to do is to get this report, which basically says across our team, here's the different remote ability scores across the teams in the organization. Yes. Uh, it also previously we understood from an individual perspective. Now we've drawn it up. To the teams itself we've also got the individual scores and importantly what we are now really able to see for the first time across the organization who's working well who needs some help who's at risk yes and this is a wonderful tool for um, health safety and environment professionals, risk management professionals, operations professionals who are looking at the organization as a whole to bring that organization into a policy standard. Indeed. Um, and, and it's not just uh, compliance there, Dai. It's also about understanding and caring for those needs because we didn't we didn't really have a granular data based approach, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and we also know that uh, sometimes the employee um, 360s sometimes don't reflect true conditions because we can't each household is different. Each individual is different, as we've seen from the challenges that are presented to individuals uh, before, uh, you know, and so what we are now able to do is to use modern tech, very simple modern tech to understand the remote work conditions of our folk uh, and what we can do very specifically to employ the right resources uh, to achieve this. Because what we are also seeing is that 30% uh, of individuals have complained to their organization saying that they have been over communicated to. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah. There's another thirty percent that says that they have been undercommunicated to. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. The the communications guidelines standards everything has changed and and that's even changed in terms of the need for developing team charters um, for teams so that they can have um, work standards before they even get started working. Um, so remote ability really helps uh, develop those standards and um, communicate the needs of the employee to have a more employee-centric um, company and environment. Indeed. And um, Dave, if you remember, the five key questions at operational head, HR, health and safety, if you are managing a team, the, the top five key questions are, how do you make remote work possible, uh, productive uh, and, and efficient? Uh, who's working well, who's not working well, how do we use our resources to uh, support productivity. And also what we need to do is we need to be able to look at the top 20 issues. And what, that's what remote ability does for us, is to be able to look at the top 20 issues. And as you can see over here, uh, these are the top 20 issues that an organization comes up with based on the data to apply to manage their customers. Mm -hmm. right. So this actually presents a nice segue into the end. If you've got any questions and if you do want 
uh, to reach out to us, please reach out to Dai, uh, who will most definitely uh, support you with any aspect of remote work that uh, that is covered in this space and anything else as well. So, yep. Dai, uh, let me uh, let me ask you to tell people how they can reach out to you. Absolutely. So to reach out to me, you just go to www.whatworksconsultants.com. On that main page, there is a, a complimentary 30 minute consultation button. You just click that. Um, be sure to schedule with me personally. And uh, I will um, collect your um, your software requirements, as well as any other challenges that you are facing as a um, as a leader within your organization. So again, that's www.whatworksconsultants.com. And if you are receiving this webinar in an email, I'll go ahead and post a link below, or you can just click straight through. Thank you very much, Dai, and thank you everyone for your time. From all of us here in Auckland, New Zealand, goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>